Hi, crafting friends. Welcome to my podcast. My name is Barbara Red Savikas, and this is Bondi Crafter. And for this month, September, I'm doing Vlog Denver. It's the 15th of September today, 2023. And this will be. I'm having the weekend off. <laughs> So won't be back till next week, but in the meantime, I will be having fun. So I have a few things to talk about. Firstly, my dilemma yesterday was my litmus. My litmus is now a big tube joined. I joined it this morning after thinking about it a few times. I would like to thank Kim, Alison, Anne and Gail. Thank you so much for your comments. I think I just winged it really. But I did, I, I do appreciate your comments and Thank you so much for taking time to comment. This is what happened. I found it really hard to um, turn it inside out and Kitchener. I did try that. I tried, um, I imagine it's Kitchener on the outside where you, um, weave I'd say weave the um row the um horizontal pearl stitches together in a straight column in the end what I did after a lot of thingy <laughs> I undid the cast off edge put it on a needle connected the two, these two edges all the way around with a circular needle. Then I um, did a big tacking stitch with wool, took the needle out so that it would stretch. So I, I think it stretched just perfectly enough. And then I did a three needle bind off with two needles. <laughs> I know this sounds complicated, but what I did was I took my wool, one strand of the grey wool, I put the needle through the um, cast off edge, no, I put the needle through the um, live edge stitch, then I went over to the cast off loop, the cast on loop. <laughs> I knitted them together and then cast them off and I did that all the way around and it is a it's a three needle bind off it probably is really neat on the other side but it just looks like a seam I won't cover it it's a it is what it is knitting <laughs> I had it on and it's so warm, so I won't be wearing this until next winter. But this is how I will wear it. I'll have the seam at the back and it's two loops. I really like it. I'll only knit one. <laughs> Finish my litmus. I love it. I have uh, connected the tube. And I think it'll be really nice for winter. I love the yarns, uh, hedgehog fibres and the rustic greys. But um, now that I've discovered that you can make the rustic so soft with washing up detergent, I think that'll be the way to go, especially around my neck and scarves and shawls and everything. So. Yeah, 
I'll show you how I connected. Cool. <clears throat> so yeah, finished with my litmus. I'm so happy to get projects finished, completed. I have to block this now, not block actually, but just um, uh, wash it, soak it in detergent for an hour and a half or so. And it'll even out all the, um, all the stitches. So that they're even like these ones. And yeah, that'll be finished. This is the first cowl I've ever made. <laughs> and I'm happy with it. <clears throat> Thank you friends for helping me get through that. There's a first for everything. That was so helpful. Um, now, going to have a look at, well, I'm going to show you what my friend Judith made me for my birthday. So beautiful. It's a case, um, either a little um, coin purse that I can put my coin purse in or a phone um, purse, which is perfect size for my phone. Judith has made it with felt and she has appliqued um, triangles, colourful triangles all over it and done this beautiful freehand quilting all over it. I love meandering quilting. She's quilted it all. It's not lovely. Uh, around the front. It's just beautiful. Just a perfect size too. And we open the button. And she's lined it with this lovely green lanterns. So beautiful. Thank you, Judith. I love it. This is a handy project to make um, crafting friends if you like felting. Now, felting is a really lovely craft because these pieces of felt feel so beautiful, especially now the new woolen felts that are that are out in the marketplace is so lovely. Jude's got a nice collection and she's made it in my favorite colors. And I think it has a nice, I would say mid-century modern vibe. Love it. This is a beautiful project. Yeah. Crafting people think up such lovely things to make. <laughs> my friend Jordan, my friend, my daughter Jordana has also made a couple of things out of felt, mainly sculptures. She's made a, a watering can and a cat. I'll go and show you. My daughter Jordana is very crafty too. And look at that. She made these a few years ago. That is so lovely, a little cat. And this beautiful watering can. Is that just lovely? A beautiful flower. I use uh, the watering can as a pencil holder and my paintbrush. <clears throat> my paintbrush. I use to clean the sewing machine with, so we always know where it is. One of my favorite pencils of all time. It's a gas um, pencil. I mean, fab pencil. It's a colored giant by Lyra, made in Germany. Faber resin. It is just lovely. I love pencils. I just love them. I think it's because I loved pencils when I was young, like kindergarten. <laughs> I just love the pencil cupboard. But yeah. 
two very talented people that I know make gorgeous crafting things. So lucky. Happy mail. I had I had ordered these a few weeks ago, I think. They came from the UK and they're so beautiful. From the attic spin. Oh, so lovely. And I don't think I've ever made anything with neons before and this will be new for me. And they are so lovely. This one's called Neon Green Bow. I got two of those and a strawberry patch. <clears throat> They're lovely. And they also came with little stitch markers, which is so nice. Thank you. That one's a little birdhouse. And some scissors and a cupcake. It's so lovely. But I think I'll make um, a shawl out of these two, um, three. I think I'll use them together. What do you think? I've been wanting to get some attic spin dye for a while now, and I finally did. I'm so happy. They're beautiful. Thank you. My little cactus has flowered. It flowers every year at this time. Last year it flowered twice, had two flowers, but this year it has one perfect little flower. So beautiful. I think I've bonsai it. I've had it for 33 years now in the same little pot. I've never repotted it. Still in the same soil that it came in from Kmart for $3.99, I think it was. Got it when my son was three years old, or thereabouts. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Hang on, I'll spray it with some water. Just a short spritz. Usually give it a short spritz. I've got three cactus. There's one living next door. It has the most beautiful red spikies. I think they're photo optic spikes. That's my cactus garden. <laughs> Here we are back at the garden. There's new shoots. I'm really pleased about it. Little buds are ready to, to pop open this weekend on that little native orchid there flowers are going on that one. Little Phalaenopsis. Lovely colours. I transplanted this one twice. <laughs> and this one had fallen off the big one and I put it in there. I'm hoping it's going to grow. It's got uh, the tips of the roots are bright green, so that's hopeful. Not sure, so sure about this one, although there are green tips. My African orchid, African violet that uh, Sylvie gave me is starting to revive and look really nice. I've taken all the dead leaves off, given it a nice uh, lot of water and some osmocote, and hopefully. It will take off. All the little orchids up there. I've put some more up, two more. I repotted, I repotted the one on the top uh, yesterday because it was in like three pieces of bark. It came like that in a little tiny pot and that was about it. It just needed more of more. <laughs> More bark, more moss, more stuff to grow in. I love my garden. Little flowers are still out there. And my little cactus. Loves it there in the sun. I'm so glad when it flowers. Yeah, I would love a greenhouse, but this is as close as I will get to a greenhouse. I love it. I think it's a beautiful place to have plants. And that's it. You can see over the ocean there is still smoke coverage. There's a lot of smoke coverage here. 
still, a week later. Mm. It's quite warm. Look at this um, puzzle that John's just done. That's just picked up. Nothing girls is just standing there by itself. It's unreal. 1,500 pieces. 1,500 pieces just standing there. So does that mean it's good quality one? Yeah. Yeah. He keeps losing pieces of it, though, like, just found one piece on the floor after he'd finished it near his shoe. I mean, it had been there for days and usually he gets the granddaughter to look for it, but <laughs> found himself this time. And all the bits are there now, so he'll probably put it away. That's like the third time he's put together because there was a piece missing and then he found it. <laughs> Great. It's a good puzzle. What do you think? Yeah. That's Great. That's a really short um, video today. Next week I hope to make longer videos. I will get into some projects. I hope to do some hand quilting next week, maybe the week after. We'll see how we go. There's a lot of things coming up. There's Rosh Hashanah tomorrow. And then there's Yom Kippur next week. And then there's Sukkot. So that is eight days of loveliness. I've got the hiccups. But anyway, that's it for me for this episode, friends. Thanks for joining me. I hope everyone has a good weekend. Stay well. Stay Stay crafty. Have fun. Think about crafting if you can't craft. Look at books. Just relax. It's getting very warm here very unseasonal. I think we've had the warmest um, September in on record in the high mountains here in the Alps. So people say it's climate change. Well, it is climate change in a way, but from my point of view, you look at a thousand year cycle and you see every thousand years and then there's smaller um, smaller circles within circles but a thousand year cycle the earth warms and cools and it's a natural thing because we're not going around the sun in a circle exactly we're doing a elliptical thing and the closer we get to the sun the warmer it gets and the madder people get <laughs> and the more the earth heats up and then it cools down again so I'm just hoping it's not getting too hot too soon this year. We'll see how it goes. Okay, that's it for me. I'll see you next week. Bye, friends.